episode 42, we looked at creating events and having them automatically be added to our database and full calendar. Then in episode 93, we looked at recurring events and the Ice Cube Gym. In this episode, we'll look at adding recurring events to our full calendar. For this episode's code, I pulled down the episode 42 from GitHub, so we'll be using that as our starting point. However, one thing that I did change is I extracted out from the vendor assets JavaScript folder, the full calendar and moment JS libraries, and instead I'm using the railsassets.org to install full calendar as well as moment JS. And then I'm adding in the ice cube gem for our recurring events. Be sure to run bundle or restart your rails application. Next in your terminal, you can run rails generate model recurring event title anchor, which we'll make a date, and then frequency, we will make an integer, and this is for our enumerator, and then a color for the event. And one thing I made with the frequency is a limit one, so it can only be a single digit, and then default to zero. And then similar in episode 93 with our recurring events, I have a enumerator for the frequency, and I've added a couple of extra ones this time. So we have our weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, and annually. And then we have our schedule, which is going to just create a new instance of the ice cube schedule. And then it will build out each one of the events based on the frequency. So our goal is going to be able to still click on one of the dates and then a new event will pop up. And then we can also say new recurring event, which will close this model and then pop up a new one. We can then put in our event. We can select our anchor date, which is going to be the date that this is going to be recurring on. So if I select the six, which is a Sunday, and then we can give it a color and select our frequency. When we create a new recurring event, you'll see that it automatically pops up. And as we go through each one of the months, it lists out our event. And then you can click on one of the recurring events, and then you're able to modify it, and then update the changes, and it'll automatically show up on the calendar. And similar to our events, we'll create a resources recurring events in our routes.rb file. And in the existing events form, we'll just create a new link to our new recurring event, and then we'll pass in the new recurring event path. And the important bit is to make it a UJS, so we pass in the remote true, and we're only going to do this if it's a new record. And then for the recurring events controller, it's your standard CRUD controller. And basically all I did was copy out the code from the events controller and then just renamed everything to recurring event. And on the views, I basically copied out the events folder since we already had that working. And then I just relabel things as recurring events. So on the new action, once the user clicks on the new recurring event, we'll hide the modal backdrop. We'll then render the new form and then we'll show the new recurring event model. The new partial just renders the form, and the form just takes in the inputs. However, one thing I'll note, because we are using a enumerator for our frequency, I am changing this to a select. I am passing in the collection, the recurring event, frequencies, keys. And once the event is created, the create JSERB will be called. And then you can see here that we're just calling in the full calendar, render events, and then we have our JSON parse, and then we are rendering the event. And similar for when a event is updated or destroyed, we are removing the event with the full calendar API. But one of the gotchas here is the ID that we're calling. So because we are rendering our regular events as well as recurring events on the same calendar, we don't want to use the object's ID because we could have conflicting values. So instead, for all the recurring events, I'm going to prepend it with recurring, and for all of the regular events, I'll just prepend it with event. So this would render out something like event one. So the tricky part of this episode, and where things really become a little bit different from either one of the two previous episodes, is when we get into rendering the actual calendar. So if we look under our JavaScripts folder, the main thing that we've changed here was the event sources. So before I believe this was just event and we changed it to event sources. We're passing in both the events JSON and also the recurring events JSON. 
So we have two different sources that we're going to be displaying the calendar with. So when we look at our calendar, we have two single events that are not recurring. And these are pretty simple to do because these would be two separate records in our database. However, when we talk about recurring events, this green test event is one single record in the database. However, we need to show it multiple times based on the frequencies selected. So to do that, within our index.json.j builder under the recurring events, we will call json.partial and then we'll pass in our recurring events. And this is just going to be a active record collection of all the recurring events. And then we tell it that we want to render the partial recurring events, recurring event, and as recurring event. And this will just make a local variable available within the recurring event partial. So for the recurring event events, we will need to go back to our model. And in this case, now we have a start date and a end date provided by full calendar. So we need to create this method events that we can then pass back an array to loop through. So we can create our public method events with the start date and end date. And if the value was not present, then we're just going to default it to today's date minus one year and the end date to the date today plus one year. If the end date is available, then we'll try to convert it over to a date. And then we'll pass back our schedule occurs between the start frequency and the end frequency. So once we have our array, we can then call json.array, and then we can loop through each one of the events just like we would with the normal event. But keep in mind that we are prepending the ID with recurring, and then we're passing in the recurring event ID. On the start date and end date, do take note that we are referencing the actual event because the occurrences between object returns an array of dates. And then we provide the update URL and the edit URL and we are referring back to the recurring event in both cases. And the last bit that we would have to update is when we want to click and drag and move one of our recurring events to a different date, it does work by default. However, there's one gotcha on the back end. For the update action, we'll check to see if the params event is available, even though we normally use the recurring event. If it is, then we would just want to update our recurring events anchor with the parameter event start. Otherwise, we would just update our event normally. So if we move our event to a different date and then refresh the page, you'll see that it stays there. And the reason for this is in the event drop action in our full calendar function is creating the event data with the event, with the start parameter and the end parameter and when this gets posted back, it's getting posted back to our recurring event. So this is the JSON structure it's posting back as. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.